Hey guys, The Wood Craftsman here. I've got a explosion proof fluorescent light fixture in front of me here that I'm actually going to be converting over to an LED bypass fixture. Now I got this light off of eBay. It was brand new in the box. It was very well boxed. Had plenty of uh, packing around it. Um, this is actually what they call an explosion proof fluorescent light fixture. It's good for class one, division one, group C and D. And that's really where the most important. You got flammable liquids or vapors present. You need to be a class one, a division one, group C and D. And that's more so because of just the flammable liquids and vapors present. Um, this one was sold as a 220 volt model according to the part number. And the interesting thing was is I never actually had seen one of these up front or paid a lot of attention to them to see if there's anything special as far as how they were wired. Now I'll turn the light over here shortly, but I wanted to show you a couple things first. Um, as you can see here, there is no conduit for the other end of the hot side of the bulb on the other this end here. But if you look on this side, this is where all your connections are made. Here's where your tubes come out. So I wasn't really sure if it was truly a special setup, if the bulbs were special or what it was. But actually doing a little bit more investigation, turns out to be it is nothing more than a standard um, ballast with standard T8 bulbs. Um, the interesting thing enough is what they actually did here is just open this up here real quickly. If you see those two wires on the top going down that channel on the top of the bulb, that's actually a channel that actually runs behind the bulb to the other end. I want to flip this over, maybe you'll get to see it. But the interesting thing I wanted to show you was is the model number claims it is a 220 volt. But when you look at the ballast, the ballast is 120 to 277. Now keep in mind, this has never been used. This is brand new. So I don't know why they would have marketed it as a 220 volt model. Um, I should have known that as well because all the ballasts I've ever replaced in the shop here are universal. They're 120 to 277. So I wasn't sure if there's something really special about this or not. But um, I actually reached out to Larson Electronics, the manufacturer of this lamp, to see if these could be wired as a um, LED bypass fixture. And uh, they said, yep, not a problem. However, I did realize there was a problem that they failed to tell me. So let me uh, put this back together here and I'll flip the um, lamp over so you can see the other side and explain a little bit as far as uh, converting it to LED bypass. All right, so I've got the light uh, fixture flipped over here and I was going to show you inside the tube here right down there you can actually see that channel that's got the two wires that run to the other end of the bulb holder right here this spring here or this piece of wire essentially has actually just helped to line up the bulb these sockets are slightly different um, they're not a traditional tombstone where it's got a slot in the end you can twist it it actually has two holes in this in the socket that match the prongs on the bulb so getting over to kind of uh, making this an LED bypass, uh, there's one thing that they failed to tell me that I didn't realize. And that is the fact that basically what you do is you loosen up this screw and you loosen up this screw and you can basically twist this and pull this off and the bulb will come out and you can replace the bulb. Now if you look at the wiring configuration here, the wires on top, here the wires on the bottom that's actually where the pins are so the pins are like this or essentially like this the interesting problem with that is on any LED ballast bypass the pins are laying 90 degrees to that let me grab a bulb and show you here okay so here is a Sylvania uh, this is a lead lessons. It is a LED bypass bulb and it requires a neutral on one end, hot on the other. This is a class B double ended. And I specifically is looking for something that's double ended so that way that um, you can never put the bulb in wrong. It'll always work any direction you put it in. Uh, single ended, what they mean there is that one pin is live and one is neutral. On a double end, one set of prongs is live, the other send on the other end is neutral. Um, and it makes a difference how you wire it, especially if you're doing a LED retrofit with a traditional 
uh, fixture like these here. You have to either use shunted or non-shunted tombstones, and uh, there's a lot of videos on that, so I've been doing a lot of uh, research on this. So getting back to the problem, so essentially the way the ball lays in this, the pins would have to be like this. Okay, keep that in mind. When you look at this, this is the back side of the bulb. So the diodes in this LED are right here. So by turning this 90 degrees, now the diodes are shooting light out this way. So what will happen is, is I'll have a lot of light, um, I'll have a lot of light output on the sides, but not on the bottom where I need it. So what I actually need is a LED bulb that is rotatable and the tricky part is I was looking for something that had a high color rendering index of 80 or, or higher. I also wanted something that was about 4000 K and then I also wanted uh, class B double ended and actually I did find some on the internet here just the other night uh, last night actually uh, from a company called Larson Electric. Totally different company than the fixture, but they actually have bulbs that give me those requirements. So I'll actually be returning these. Actually, I'll probably keep them to an upgrade on one of the LED lights in the shop here, but that's kind of the problem that I'll be running into with that. So it's a good thing I looked at that now because otherwise, like I said, the, the light is gonna be shooting out here versus here. So just something you kind of learn in passing. So that is the project. Uh, once I actually get into this, um, I'll set the camera up with my microphone. I'll kind of walk the way through. It's not really going to be a how-to video. It's just more so an understanding as far as it can be done. And like I said, I did talk to somebody today at Larson Electronics about this. And they said, yeah, you could easily convert this to an LED bypass. There was nothing um, that you should or shouldn't do with it. So it's just more so making sure that it's wired correctly and that you have all the fittings sealed up when it's done. So... Um, the thing with explosion proof equipment, there's actually a lot of good videos on YouTube. A lot of people think that explosion proof is designed to basically keep vapors out of the fixture, which is partially true. But the other thing I've been told is as well, if vapors do seep in, that if it ignites, that the fixture contains the explosion. And if I think of it, I'll put a link to the video that I saw that actually demonstrated an explosion within a, a light fixture. It's actually really cool and quite dangerous if you think about it. So anyways, so that's kind of the update on this. Once I get that far, I will uh, show you the details in process. All right, guys, stay tuned for the upcoming video parts.